Hey everyone, it's Gary Kay, and we're doing a post Enterprise Connect video cast. I'm um, excited to be joined with Brian McCarson. Brian is the Vice President General Manager of the Intel Nook Group, and you all know the Nooks because of those little computers behind a ton of stuff uh, collaboration rooms to digital signage to all sorts of things. Brian, what's up with the Nook? Yeah, we're, we're coming on our 10 year anniversary of Nooks this year. Um, and these uh, little simple devices just keep growing in performance, growing in features, capabilities, and uh, form factors, and continuing to gain in popularity. And we have uh, quite a few exciting new things that are next for these next units of compute uh, that we've been launching this year and have more exciting stuff planned in the coming months. But well, those things have been used for years as in-room PCs for collaboration systems, as digital signage, media players, and as uh, in uh, purpose-built computers, uh, kiosks to even in-room computers um, in classrooms. What are some of the new features? I mean, I, I noticed the, there's more outputs and more ports on some of the newer units that I've seen in the past. What are some of the new features that, that, been, that are kind of new to 2022? Yeah, great question. I mean, it's remarkable that uh, something as small and compact as this could uh, uh, could be a 4K output device that uh, and uh, could be also then transported directly into industrial environments for use, actually running machines, doing complex analytic functions. What we're covering right now is a full spectrum of use cases uh, that are are really catching on because of the quality of the product, the industry leading warranty, and the fact that, you know, the Nug Group spends so much time trying to make sure these things are super easy to use, quiet, affordable, reliable, with all the IO you need without taking up as much space. And to think that this is more powerful than a huge desktop PC was just yeah. a few years ago is yeah. remarkable. And what's even cooler that I'm seeing now for some new use cases is um, uh, people are, in some cases, turning away their laptop to just be, that's what I use when I'm going to a coffee shop to work or when I'm traveling on business. Uh, but they're taking their PC with them when they are in that one or two days a week where they're going into the office. Uh, this is what drops into their bag. And they can just simply take this, connect it into uh, their work, uh, set up, connected into their home setup, and not have to deal with as much headache. Um, I, I've even carried one of these around in my back pocket before uh, when I'm, I'm going places. But another kind of cool thing that's starting to gain some some serious traction is uh, imagine having a, uh, a, a computer that's basically the size of a credit card. Wow. And our, our NUC elements, um, this is a complete laptop CPU with Wi-Fi and memory all built into wow. the same card. Um, so now when someone is building a, a, a digital kiosk, a digital sign of the future, and they're investing in this rich 4K display, are they going to want to go upgrade the whole computing system next time that they need some new feature or they want to do some advanced AI capabilities? Just take out the compute card, socket in the next generation, you're ready to roll. Uh, so for a lot of people, they're fee seeing a pretty significant sustainability value proposition with trying to modularize compute. And it gives them a, a greater uh, benefit from a total cost of ownership perspective when it makes it super easy to upgrade your, uh, your compute horsepower whenever you need a new function, new feature, new application running. Uh, rather than having to always rip and replace the entire system. So those are some new cool things that are happening. One other cool thing you might get a kick out of is uh, we're seeing a lot of uh, different um, companies take our, our compute chassis and put them in innovative form factors so you can add some style and pizzazz mm -hmm. to... Uh, to what you're doing on your desk. It kind of reminds me of the hi-fi industry 20 years ago or 30 years ago 
where yeah. people are taking stereo systems and, and building a cool factor around them. Exactly. This is a company out of Europe called Blue Jour, and this is actually, you know, hand carved. Uh, I believe this one is maple. Um, and since it runs in such a, a highly efficient a low power compute environment, uh, they can uh, have all the IO you need just in this uh, cool little I form. I see an pack. antenna on the back of that. Is that is that a, a Wi-Fi antenna or is that 5G? You bet, yeah, you can put whatever you want. There's an M.2 card that you can okay. put in there to, to make that work. Yeah, and I think that's gonna be, that's, that is going to translate into medi meteoric growth for your team. Uh, 5G because we're you know the the complexity of the network's always been complex but Absolutely. 5G really sort of changes changes the landscape doesn't it? That's right. Yeah. You your team sees a wide vision of a wide segment of all the different markets uh, that computers are sold into and one of them is digital signage and I'm curious what your take is on the growth of the digital signage market where we are today. Oh yeah, I see it really exploding and one of the things that's really interesting to me is how much additional edge compute is going to be needed for digital signage of the future. Um, what's interesting is what if you have a digital sign that adapts to different users that come in front of it? Mm -hmm. um, if you have more a camera, exactly, that's more interactive um, and it's going to look at features, look at interest level, look at demographics of people sure. that are coming in front of a retail store or in front of a, a, an aisle that you want to catch people's eye inside a, a brick and mortar store, um, being able to have that interaction uh, and, and then change what you display as a result of that change in demographic requires compute horsepower. And so having that right at the sign can deliver a crisper, faster refresh and make it even more interactive and more attentive to the user rather than having to send a signal all the way through the network to the cloud, process it and send it back. Yeah. It can also so you have an on-prem and cloud-based player in one. Exactly. So you yeah. still have the connection to the cloud so that right. you can figure out, hey, what's working? Yeah. If I look at all these signs, I see a lot of positive interaction when I have this sort of um, uh, uh, framework that's being published to my, to my consumers yeah. Yeah. Um, so that you can optimize and update your algorithms but not have to rely on the entire network uh, infrastructure to make that happen. It can be a more cost-effective way to improve the experience of digital sign users. Yeah, that's 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 awesome. Um, well, of course, you can go to intel.com to learn more. Uh, Brian, I, I really appreciate it, and congratulations on all that you've done. Uh, well, sir, first off, Enterprise Connect, but over the last couple of years in collaboration and in digital signage, and then that little uh, that little card that changes out the compute device inside is just amazing. Yeah, that's, nut compute that's, element. That's yeah. amazing. That's the nut compute element. Um, well, thanks, uh, Brian. I really appreciate it. And thanks for joining us in this special video cast as a wrap up to the Enterprise Connect show. You can see all of our coverage at raypubs.com uh, and uh, just type in Enterprise Connect in the uh, video search window. Brian, have a great day. Thanks so much. Thanks for your time. Rants and